so you can't turn the phone. Is it showing? It still says live. Like it doesn't look like right Does it? It doesn't look like this. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to another prophetic house of prayer live. We welcome you. Join on in. Come on in. Hey, Alicia. See if a few more people jump on real quick. Ooh, there's so much to go over. So much the Lord wants to say. So let's go ahead and, and start with prayer. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity to be able to come before your people to have the ability to speak into their lives. Holy Spirit, right now we decrease that you may increase. It is all about you, what you desire, your will, and what you would have us to say to these, your people, who will be watching the live and who will be watching the replay. We come against every distraction of the enemy we now. decree that every plan that he has concerning this life, concerning this prayer movement is destroyed in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes. Father, bless this time yes, and bless your yes. people. In this we ask in Jesus' name. In Jesus Amen. Name. All right. <clears throat> so we are here to deliver the word of the Lord today and pray. And this, this is going to be um, the point of prayer today, what God has given us to release. Um, and I just want to just lay a foundation first before I release what God gave me. Uh, today is 2-22-22. And this by no means is numerology. Numerology is demonic. and But God has a book called Numbers. So God is the God of numbers. We know that Satan is a pervert. He's a thief. So he will steal and take what God uses prophetically and he will make it profane. Mm -hmm. So this, what I'm releasing, God has spoke to me. Uh -huh. How you doing? How you so doing, Miss Lee? Uh, God has spoke to me. Actually, I was in the store with my wife. We was in, uh, what store that we was in? Uh, Michael's. Yeah. Uh, I was, we was walking through Michael's and then I heard that Holy Spirit was just start speaking to me about um, Isaiah 22, 22. And he was like, I want you to talk about that on the 22nd. And I didn't know that the 22nd was a Tuesday. I had to look at my phone and look at the calendar. So I knew that Holy Spirit wanted me to deliver this, but I had no idea what he wanted to really say until I dug deeper into it. And once I began to dig deeper into this, it has blown my mind away. So this word that I have today is for it's for those who have an ear to hear so if you have an ear to hear what the spirit of the lord is saying to the church right now you will receive and see what god is doing in this season so again numerology is demonic this is not where that's coming from this is coming from the spirit of god so 2 22 22 is god speaking to us today for the number 22 also means the number of light the number of light you know the bible says that we the light of the world jesus came as the light of the world and now we are the light of the world so that number is light so on this live we finna reveal light 
light is going to come to you today. So I want to read Isaiah um, 60. So Isaiah 60 first. And this is for those that hear this. And this is a word for you right now. It says, arise and shine for thy light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall rise upon thee. His glory shall be seen upon you. So that word is for those who are seeking the Lord. The light of God is coming upon you. He's telling you to arise and shine. Yes, it's dark out there. Yes, it's gross darkness on people. Yes, we're seeing all kinds of things right now that's dark. But his light has come and has risen upon you. Um, so now I want to get into the word of what God had revealed unto me. So we're actually going to go to Isaiah 22, and we're actually going to start at verse 15. So Isaiah 22, verse 15, and it says, Thus says the Lord God of hosts, Go, get thee unto this treasurer, even unto Shebanah, I hope I said his name right, Shebanah, which is over the house and say, What has thou here? Whom has thou here? Thou has hewn out for yourself a sepulcher. You have hewn out for yourselves on high and a graven habitation from himself in the rock. Behold, the Lord will carry thee away. Behold, the Lord will carry thee away. I want y'all to hear these words. With, the, with a mighty captive, and he will surely cover thee. And it says, he will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. And thou shalt die there, and your chariots of glory shall be shamed of the shame of the Lord's house. And I will drive thee from thy station, and from thy state shall be pulled down. And it shall come to pass in that day, I will carry my servant Elikim. Remember that name, Elikim. The son of Hilakai. I hope I said that right too. And it says, I will clothe him with thy robe, strengthen him with thy girdle. I will commit Thou government into his hand, he shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and the house of Judah. And here's verse 22, 22, 22, right here. And the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulders, so he shall open and none shall shut, and he shall shut and none shall open. So that's 22 22 talking about the key of david so this passage right here is talking about a change in leadership mm -hmm. it's talking about a changing of the guards because shebana was a servant of the king so we got many out there that saying that they're servants of the king who's the king king of kings lord of lords jesus you say you are servant of the king but this this guy shebana here was taking stuff from the kingdom and putting it up for himself. He was, put, he was taking unauthorized authority and storing stuff away for his own self, serving the king. And God seen this and through Isaiah brought judgment and said that you're going to be taken away and throw, tossed like a ball. So this right here is revealing a change in leadership. So there's many out there that that serve the king, not only serve the king, but you serve and you may serve in your church. Mm -hmm. You may serve the fivefold ministry. You may be a leader, a leader under a leader. This goes for the leaders under the leaders. Now, if you've been taking glory, you've been taking credit for yourself. God said, I'm dealing with you. Yes. If you've been taking credit and honor upon yourself because you've been chosen to serve in a ministry 
You are the one this is talking about right now. If you had the wrong heart, why you're serving the king, he's dealing with you. Yes. And then there's another right in here where it's talking about El Elikim. This is God's replacement. And it says that he had the heart of a father. That he will be a father unto the people in Jerusalem. Yes. So God is saying right here, those with the father's heart, he's rising up. Those that got the same heart as the king, he's rising up. And it, he says, so this is for the leaders, that he's giving you the key of David to true leadership. So what is the key of David? The key of David is all access. <laughs> so when the Holy Spirit revealed this to me, like when you have a master key, a master key is able to get into any lock because it's the master key. So he said the key of David is like a master key that you will be able to have access to all areas that you need to have access to. And you will be able to lock up all things that needs to be locked up. That is the key of David. The, the all access pass, a passcode that you know that God gave you that you can put in to get, grant you access to where you need to be and what you need to do. Some leaders felt like you've been, you've been locked up. You felt like you, you can't move forward. You feel like, like you're stuck. But God said, no, because of your heart for my people, I'm raising you up and I'm giving you the key of David. Yes. If you have a heart to serve God's people and serve the king in this season, he's rising you up. He's raising you up. He's putting you in positions and places that you have never been in before. He's putting the key of David around your, your shoulder. This is your time. This is your moment. This is your season. God is changing the guards. Yes. He's changing the guards. This key is for you. And I'm talking to the leaders that are going to watch this, that you've been serving and serving and serving and serving and serving. God is saying that it's your time. But I'm going to get back to those that God is removing. So as I was studying this or looking this up, the Holy Spirit told me to look up the number 22. So I looked up the number 22, the biblical meaning of the number 22. It actually means uh, it's double 11. It means chaos and disorder. It also means a concentrated disorganization. That means disorganization is concentrated in one place, being out of order. The number 22 means that. And it also means that the king, King Ahab, we all know if you read and study your Bible, King Ahab was the wickedest king in the Bible over the people of God. He was married mm -hmm. to Jezebel. Yes. So I'm talking to the Ahabs. And he reigned for 22 years. Your time is up. Yes. Your time is up. He reigned for 22 years. So now I can't make this stuff up. I looked it up and I seen it. So I know that today God is dealing with leadership. Yes. Who has had the wrong heart. Yes. The day I know people have been putting uh, 22 double blessing, double blessing. Yeah, God will doubly bless. But what God is saying right now that he's going to remove those who has been in leadership, who has been doing the wrong thing to his people. Yes. Like Ahab, who allowed Jezebel in the kingdom. So it's been 22 years, God said. And I'm changing up the guards. Yes. He's removing and lifting up. And I want to just read the rest of this because there's a blessing to the to the Elkins. It's a more of a blessing to those who are being raised up in this season. And it says right here in verse 23, it said, I will fasten him as a nail in a sure place. That means you are going to be made stable, stability. Is coming to you. He shall be for a glorious throne in his father's house, a glorious throne, and they shall hang upon him all the glory of his father's house. 
the offspring and the issue and all the vessels of small quantity from the vessels of cups, even the vessels of the flagons. Basically, what all this means is that this is wealth. That means this particular new servant that was raised up, he received all of the wealth in the kingdom got placed upon him. He received wealth. So I want to say to those who are being raised up that that serving correctly with the right heart, wealth is coming to you. So it's not just position and authority God has given you. He also going to give you the wealth with that authority so you can serve the king in royalty. This is what God is doing in this season. He's raising up and he's tearing down. That's what the spirit of the Lord gave me for 22, 22. And my wife also, she had prophetess had a dream that she's going to share in connection to this. Um, first, God had given me um, something to give to a man of God. And it ties into this leadership. And what Holy Spirit had given to me was that just like during the time of Isaiah, the, there were dangerous times. It was a shifting of powers. Um, God's people uh, were being destroyed. Um, they were just, there were some people who were just running and God was calling them to repent. He was calling them to fall upon their face and repent for the sin. But some people were just doing what they wanted to do and just having all types of fun. <clears throat> and this is where the judgment came, where they began to, sh where the leadership began to shift. But he told me to tell this man of God that his leaders, people that have been up under him, who have been talking about him and things of that nature, like these are still dangerous times that we're living in now. Like people are falling away. They are leaving the faith. There's things that's going on where they're in their position. They have the ability and delegated authority to be able to help and stop a lot of what was going on. And God has given them the opportunity to be able to repent. But he said that he's bringing in re replacements. Yes. He's getting ready to replace those who, instead of having a heart for the people, they're more concerned about their position. Mm -hmm. Things are getting ready to shift. And with this judgment is going to come sickness. A lot of people are going to fall sick. And even come into financial hardship because of how they are not aligning themselves up with the word. Now, the dream that I had, I had this, what, maybe about a week or so ago? Mm -hmm. um, I was like, I want to stay in this body of water. And while I was in this body of water, there were these palm trees that were in the water. And I was attempting to anchor myself on these trees. Because, you know, palm trees are typically relatively long. They're tall. So in my assumption, I'm thinking that this water has to be deep. But as I began to anchor myself, I'm holding on to these palm trees. One of them I was able to pull up. And as I'm pulling it, I can hear the chains that it was attached to underneath the water. And when I pulled it up, there was no root to this tree. It was like bound in this cage. And I began to recognize that all the rest of the palm trees were like this. So, and then the water had to have been shallow because as I look off into the distance, I can see people walking. So I get down. And then Holy Spirit began to start dealing with me concerning what this meant because trees represent leadership. But how many of us know that palm trees don't necessarily grow in water? Mm -mm. So he was telling me that these trees leadership was out of place. And not only were they out of place, they had no roots. 
We're supposed to be rooted and grounded in God. So they were out of place. They were caged, bound. Roots could not go anywhere. And God don't call us to be in shallow waters. He's calling us to the deep things of him. So there is definitely a change, a shift, a changing of the guards. Leaders who have, who once were in place, but have gotten out of position. And because they have gotten out of position, there's no roots. They're not flowing in this new season of Holy Spirit. They're not going along with God. They're doing what they want to do or what they think should be done. Just watch. You're gonna start seeing some people who have been in leadership for a long time begin to fall. Their ministries begin to fall. Mm -hmm. And definitely. Oh, and I'm sorry, real quick, what Holy Spirit gave me as you was talking. Like he was saying, as far as Ahab being in leadership for 22 years, let's not forget that during his reign, Ahab was funding Jezebel. How many leaders have been funding the things of the enemy? Mm hmm. But all that's coming down and this last thing I wanted to say to those that um, that God is raising up so because this is an encouragement to you uh, I wanted to read Revelations 3 um, 7 and it says to the angel of the church of Philadelphia I write these things says he that is holy he that is true and he that has the key of David <laughs> He that opens and no man can shut. And he that shut it that no man can open. So this is this is Jesus with the key of David in the book of Revelations. The same key of David that was being talked about in the book of Isaiah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Pure leadership. David was considered a, lead, a, a man after God's own heart. He was a pure-hearted leader of God's people. That's the key of David. He was a pure-hearted lead leader. Yeah, he had his issues, but he was after the kingdom, the ark, the will of God. He wanted what God wanted. So this key of David is in the hands of Jesus, and we are the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. And the body of Christ got a hand. They say the hand of the body of Christ is the five-fold ministry. <laughs> so we're supposed to have these keys. And Jesus also said, I have given you keys to the kingdom. That whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. You've been given keys. Leaders. That with the right heart. So I want to I want you to take that key of David and begin to get your access to begin to follow the Holy Spirit to build the kingdom of God for the glory of God in this last and evil day. We need the key of David in this last day. We need access because the enemy has locked up some stuff that he thinks we can't get into. But the key of David will open it. The enemy has changed the locks of some things. And he think that we can't get to it because he done changed the locks. But we have the master key, the key of David. So all those leaders, we come in and the gates of hell will not prevail against the church, the true church. Those who are following after the heart of God. And now we're going to begin to pray. The prophet is going to lead us in prayer. And if you have any prayer requests, just put it on the screen or you can email it to us.
We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We invite you into this atmosphere. We invite you into this atmosphere. We say that you have full reign. You have full authority in this prayer. Uh, we just thank you that we can call upon you and that you are yes, ever Jesus. present help. Mama, mama, did you Father, we thank you that you can, that we can come before your yes, throne of grace and that we can obtain mercy. mercy. We thank mama, you that mama, as we come before your throne mercy. boldly, mama, mama, that you don't see us, but you see your son. You see the blood. We thank you, O oh God, that we can come before you. And as we're coming before you, we, O oh God, we say thank you because we know in advance that we already have the answers to our petitions as we are coming before you even now. You know what we're getting ready to ask for, what we're getting ready to pray even before we open up our mouths. But you still desire communion. You still desire us to come into your presence. And Father, we just honor you. And we thank you. So right now, Father, we just come before you. We lift up every leader. Every leader right now. Every leader that has your heart, O oh God. That Father, as they are, repenting as they are allowing for this time that you are working in their hearts that you're getting everything that's unlike you out of them oh god that you strengthen them in their inner man oh god that you build them up that you encourage them in the name of jesus we come against every plot plan and scheme of the enemy that's working against their lives in the name of jesus Father, we thank you for the shifting. We thank you for the changing of guards, oh God. Because we're not in the business of just protecting people's feelings, but that we're in the business of doing your will. We are here, oh God, to do the will of you. We are here, oh God, to colonize the earth for you, oh God, to make earth look like what heaven is. We're here, oh God, to do your will. So, Father, I pray that every heart be aligned with your will now in the name of Jesus. We lay every selfish desire on the altar. Everything that we think, everything that we may desire, we lay it on the altar. And we say, Lord, let your will be done. Let your will be done, O oh God. That you continue to raise up the remnant in this end time, O oh God. That they would be unashamed of preaching your gospel that they would do it with boldness and that they would do it in love oh god in the name of jesus and father for the ones that have not done your will for those that have led others astray oh god we pray for mercy upon them we pray for mercy upon their lives oh god that even now as we pray lord allow for a spirit of conviction and a spirit of repentance to fall upon them now in the name of jesus that they would see the error of their ways that they would turn from their wickedness oh god that they would ask for forgiveness that they would repent and that they would realign themselves with you because of the platform because of their level of influence oh god continue to raise up oh god a generation that will obey your will continue to raise up a generation oh god that will obey your word Oh, Father, we thank you. I thank you for every person that has joined this live. I thank you for every person, oh God, who has made up in their mind that they're going to follow you no matter the cost. That they're going to follow you, oh God, no matter what it may cost them. That it may cost them friends. It may cost them even loved ones. It may cost them a job. It may cost them, oh God, what they may want to do. But, Father, let them know that there is nothing that they will lose for your sake that you won't doubly or triply bless them for. Oh, Father, we give you glory and we give you praise for this time, oh God. Let us not be a people 
that are just hungry for, for personal prophetic words. Let us be a people that's hungry for you. Let us be a people that desire your righteousness, O oh God. Let us be a people that seek your face and not your hand. Lord, we love you. We love you tonight, O oh God. And we just lift up our hands unto you and we say that you are deserving, you are worthy of all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. We offer up our life unto you as a living sacrifice because there is nothing that we can do even within the lifetime that we have here that can ever repay you for what you have already done. For the sacrifice. For the shedding of your blood. For the taking of our place. That you exchanged our life. And you gave us yours. Oh Father we glorify you. We glorify you. We worship you. For you're worthy to be praised. I pray for every family. That is going through this time. The warfare that has been increased. I encourage you don't give up. Continue to press in. <clears throat> Continue to push in. In the name of Jesus. Don't allow for situations to arise. That cause you to fall away from the faith. That cause you to fall away from the things of God. That cause you to doubt what the word has spoken or what God has declared over your life. We're in good company. It took Abraham 25 years to receive the promise of a son. We're in good company. We don't serve a microwave God. We saw, we serve the almighty who gives us life and life more abundantly who does more than we can ever ask or think who supplies all your need according to his riches in glory who have given you power of what you couldn't do on your own and that is to become a son of God the word says that those who are led by the spirit of God they are the sons of God so as long as you are being led by the spirit of God you are indeed a son of God and the word said that he's never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread and Holy Spirit gave me a different revelation of that it doesn't matter where it comes from it doesn't matter which hand it comes out of to come to you the righteous is not begging the righteous is being provided for because you are his seed joint heirs with Christ do you know what you have in him do you know what rightfully belongs to you the supernatural is your inheritance. Mm -hmm. So that means whatever is not there, you have the ability to open up your mouth and declare it so in your life and stand on it. Stand on it until it's made manifest. Just like Daniel had to press in. Until his answer came to him, press in, press in until you receive your answer. The children of Israel wasn't able to enter into the promised land because of their complaining and because of their doubt and unbelief. Don't allow for unbelief to rob you of the promises of God. Don't allow for doubt to creep in and steal from you what God has already ordained for you. Things that he has made and keeps ready. Keeps ready. That means it never goes away. He keeps it ready to give to you. Be encouraged today. Be encouraged today. 
that as you continue to line yourself up with the word, as you continue to line your heart up with God, that key of David, he shall give to you because you're carrying his heart and he knows that he can trust you. Be a person who God can trust. Don't just be a person who trusts God. Be a person who God can trust. Because a man who can trust you will trust you with everything that he has. Let God know you as a good steward, a good steward of the word, a good steward of your finances, mm -hmm. that he can bless and increase you even the more. Even the more. Yes. In Jesus' name. And I, I hear the uh, I hear the spirit of the Lord saying that there's some things that's been locked up that he wants to unlock. And if you release your faith, he's gonna Thank unlock you, it for you. And you're gonna unlock it as a sign and a wonder Thank you, Lord. that this is a word from him. Thank you, so there's some things that's been locked up Thank you. that has not been released that God is going to release. So whoever sees this, this replay or watching, this word is for you. There's some things that's been locked up, but by the key of David in the name of Jesus, he's going to open up what no man can close. He's going to open it up. Yes. In the name of Jesus. And then no one will be able to close it. In the name of Jesus. And he's going to close some doors as you repent. See, this is what I hear too. As you repent and you close some doors that you have open for a long, long, long time. Yes. As you close them, he's going to lock them up and they're not going to be reopened. Yes. But you have to be willing to repent. So those who may not even be saved. And my wife does this every time. So I'll go ahead and do it this time. Those that may be watching this and you're not saved. And you need Christ in your life. You're like, what are, what are they talking about? The key of David. And what are they talking about? And, and, and God, this and changing of the guards. And I just need God in my life. Yes. If you just need God in your life, just say this after me. I believe that God raise Jesus from the dead on my behalf. And it says, if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. So as you repent of your sins and receive Jesus into your heart right now, you are saved. That simple. You receive a new spirit born again because you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart you're saved and if you you need you have to have the holy spirit and if you don't have the baptism of the holy spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues is you will be lost in this world so we ain't gonna leave you hanging so right now i say receive the holy ghost receive the holy ghost receive the holy spirit so lift up your hands right now the holy spirit is coming upon you and begin to speak in other tongues you are being filled now and i believe as people see this and they watch it they go back and watch it that those are going to be filled with the spirit and saved and we thank y'all for your time prophetic house of prayer not a church but we are a prayer movement and you can email us at um prophetic house of prayer seven at gmail.com if you are joining the replay or watching us on the replay um you're more than welcome to comment um your prayer requests we are always in prayer um, for those who who send us their requests, and again, if you if it's too personal and you want to personally message us, it is prophetic 
houseofprayer7 at gmail.com. Um, I check it daily um, throughout the day because we don't ever want to miss the opportunity to pray for you. Uh, we do appreciate you joining us, Sister Lee. We love you. Um, you've been joining us here of lately. We do appreciate your support. Uh, Miss Elaine, we do thank you for joining us. Welcome to the live. Uh, this is what we do. We enjoy it. Um, like my husband said, this is not a church. We are a prayer <coughs> movement. This is what God has given us. Um, this is the birthing of a prayer movement through us. Um, we are definitely not the only ones. There are so many other ministries out there that are answering the call to prayer because this is what our nation needs. Not only our nation, but our family, our communities. Our, we, just, we need prayer. People are thinking that the enemy isn't real and, and he's not after you. And, and, they, and it's so far from the truth so far from the truth there are so many wicked rulers principalities powers demonic spirits that are out there that are controlling people's lives influencing them um, to walk away from god and people are are hurting they're hurting from trauma they're hurting from from you know it could be anything they're hurting from And so with that, you know, people will easily, you know, self-medicate, get away from the things of God. Um, so please, family members, whoever they are, um, let us know. And we shall definitely be in prayer. Um, we appreciate you. We love you. We do this every Tuesday at 7. So please come back. Um, join us again. Share, 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 share. Um, let family members know, let friends know that we come on on Tuesdays at 7. They can catch our replays um, and get a taste of the glory. Um, so until next time, we love you guys. We thank you for joining us and we will see you soon.